Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this uh, LP of Hearts of Iron 4, where I know absolutely, well, almost absolutely nothing about uh, World War II or this game, and yeah, I'm going to be taught by uh, the McD, and it's me, I'm Ibble Bibble, I'm not the OP of this, so don't get confused, right, I'm, I'm just in I'm, I'm, I'm the OP of the thread, but I suck at intros, so yeah. Yep. Uh, so yeah, um, we we're playing basically the tutorial, what could be considered a tutorial nation of uh, Hearts of Iron Four, uh, or I would you say that Hearts of Iron in general has always had um, Nazi Germany as a tutorial nation, basically. Well, basically the idea with the Germans is that they're the ones in the control of the whole roadmap. Mm -hmm. at least like in the standard world war ii scenario so it gives the player more control to like pick their battles and say okay like if you're playing poland it's like well if the germans roll up and you're not ready well yeah. tough shit yeah but if you're germany you can decide okay i want to take some more time to build up until i get going right and so like normally people say okay like italy is like the tutorial nation because you have mm -hmm. a smaller role you start out with, at war with ethiopia so, so you can use that as like a little testing ground right but since this is more of a curated experience mm. where i'm in control as well then we can skip like the small tutorial step and go to the larger tutorial step if that makes sense yeah also it should be mentioned that we are um, playing in multiplayer and we're both playing as germany um so we can both mess around at the same time do multiple things which is pretty cool actually yeah, it's it's a really neat feature. I've never really messed around with multiplayer before, but this is it's it should be a fun time. Yeah. And so basically, mm -hmm. one one quick disclaimer: this should mm -hmm. not be considered like a comprehensive tutorial for the game. It's like yeah. if you're expecting to learn from me how to play the game, you know, you're gonna learn how to play the way I play, which is not <laughs> a good thing. Maybe. Oh dear. I mean, I I still don't know how boats work. Yeah, so, um, the last time I played Hearts of Iron 4, it was when it was launched uh, several years ago, and I played the tutorial as Italy, like you said, Italy is the actual tutorial nation that the actual in-game tutorial gives you, and I lost to Greece, so um, you can tell that I am very much a genius military strategist, uh, just like Hannibal or Julius Caesar. I'm one of them. Yep. Yep. So yeah. And... Uh, Teach me one. Teach me one, all these things. One, one or two more side notes. Um, mm -hmm. We're running a few minor graphical mods that I prefer. Like you're going to notice, like square counters instead of like the rectangular ones that the game stand has by standard. Because I come from Darkest Hour, Hearts mm -hmm. of Iron Two. You know, I remember square counters. I like square counters. All right. Right. And another thing is, um, I'm going to be showing footage of both my point of view and Ivil's point of view. And so the way I'm going to notify you that there's a change in view is like with this little avatar in the counter in the corner. So basically, like if I'm showing my point of view, I'm going to have this pop up mm -hmm. or like this is going to be on screen. My avatar with a little fancy hat. And if I am, if Ivo's point of view is being shown, then I'm going to have Ivo's avatar in the corner with a little helmet. Yep. And so that's the way that'll work do you but, have so uh, now i yeah do you have nato counters on i have nato counters on okay that'll it's be just, another that'll be another way you could tell us apart because i do not have nato counters on <laughs> yeah i mean like i said darkest hour i got the nato counters in my head yeah but yeah so i think this is about time where we go let's do some stuff and i switch to the actual gameplay footage yeah. So the very first thing, like, there's a whole bunch of shit going on on screen, and I have a naval zone selected already, which is not something I wanted to do. But we have notifications in the center of the screen. Mm -hmm. This is something you should be familiar with if you've played any Paradox game before. This yep. is the shit that they want you to know, okay, you should probably do something about this. Yep. It's so all right from the start. We're just probably going to do that and nothing else because going through that is probably going to take up most already enough time yeah so, so what we're going to do right? is we're going to click on the first one yeah it says research slot available oh okay oh is decisions available for me but okay 
Oh, okay. Oh, is the well, person left the left. little beaker icon. Yep, yep, yep. So this will show us our research slots. As Germany, Whoa. we have four research slots. And we're just going to click on the first select technology to research, mm -hmm. and we get the technology trees. So there's yep. a whole bunch going on here, but we'll just start with the simple one, or like the ones that you should probably be focusing on right from the start, and then go from there. Okay. The first one of that is industry, which is all the way at the right, mm -hmm. last thing, yep. industry and production. Should I go for basic machine tools or construction? Um, both, basically. Okay. All because right. this, this is basically like, if you, you usually don't go wrong by saying, okay, mm -hmm. we're going to start by researching the industry stuff. Right. Because more production is basically always good. Yep. Now, the can next I make, thing can we're going to do... Can I make a quick do, digression? Yep. Um, so... Uh, I've mentioned I know basically nothing about World War II. Um, not entirely true. I do know the events um, that happened in World War II, and I know what order they happened in, but the dates in my mind are always completely wrong. So if you, like, stop me point black on the street and ask me, hey, what, what years did World War II run between? I would say 1936 to 1939. Um... Because for whatever reason, those are the dates stuck in my head. So every time I play Hearts of Iron, every time I see that the um, that the tech tree goes past 1939, I'm like, whoa, they've got so much stuff in here that's just alt history. How did these guys do it? <laughs> uh, and the, of course, the fun thing is we are playing with historical focuses turned off. Yep. So the AI will choose semi-random focuses and semi-random uh, directions to go into and there's a mm -hmm. lot of alt history stuff that can happen here or alt fantasy if you want to say it that way yep. um, a whole bunch of whack shit mm -hmm. that we don't really know what's going to happen this should be fun then um, okay so I've so, I've got um, so I've got basic machine tools and construction number one uh, lined yep. up what, what are the other two should I put in all right, so the next one we're going to do is engineering. That's right next to industry. Mm -hmm. And we're going to research electromechanical engineering, the one on the top left. Got it. Which gives us more research speed. So if you go down to the right from there to mechanical computing, computing machine, that right branch down there mm -hmm. is a research speed right. branch. So that's also something that's usually useful to go for in basically any situation research that makes all your other research go faster mm -hmm. that's good i so the f yep sorry go on mm -hmm. so the final one is there's usually a choice here you can use uh, sometimes go to land dock train which is the mm -hmm. rightmost green one yep but the thing is germany already starts with their first um doctrine research mm -hmm. so others don't start with one and you gotta make sure make a decision which one you pick but like right now we don't have to like think about that we mm -hmm. are in mobile warfare and it's going to be the best one for us Fair and enough. so the thing is like the first technology takes like 190 days to research and the next ones take 380 so they're double in speed and there's factors to get that down faster and we will get those later mm -hmm. but so that means basically right now we don't want to like start on our second I mean, you can. Sometimes I do, but what I really think I'll go for is would go for is infantry, the one all the way on the left. Yep. That's your basic weapon stuff and some additional stuff for like mobile infantry, special forces, that kind of stuff. The very most top left one. The, uh, the MG Eagle Acht und Leichte Minenwerfer. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll let uh, you say all the German stuff. That's the support technology, which basically just it makes your infantry better. And we're okay. going to have a lot of infantry. We're going to have mob, uh, mobile infantry as well. That makes that better. Okay. So that's a very simple way to just like that's that's a good tech. Just get it. Uh, from clicking around, I noticed that we've also got uh, stuff by default in naval and air doctrine. So I guess they expect Germany to play a certain way. I guess. Um, um, yeah. So if you, sorry, that's. No, yeah. Yeah, they have a certain advantage in doctrines early, mm -hmm. and I mean, I don't know a lot about the naval doctrines, but the air doctrines is usually the one, battlefield support is the one I pick mm -hmm. for that, but that we can talk about that when we get to air. Yep. 
Um, the next one I would like to do now is Free Civilian Factories, which is the little house yep. factory thing with an exclamation. Well, they all have fucking exclamation points. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I um, see the one I mean. And it goes to Construction tab. Yep. So now we're in the Construction tab. Basically, at the top left, you see uh, 9 out of 31, mm -hmm. which means we currently have uh, 31 civilian factories. We basically, have, we have military factories and civilian factories. Mm -hmm. Civilian back factories build buildings and are basically like an abstraction of money. Right. And military factories build weapons. Right. So what we're doing right now is we're figuring out, okay, what, what kind of construction are we going to do? Mm-hmm. Right now, we're already using nine of our factories for consumer goods, mm -hmm. which is basically just like a something that you slap. It's like a malice that just gets slapped on for more democratic uh, nations that are like not let, not as mobilized, mm -hmm. need to spend more of their civilian stuff on just keeping the populace happy, that kind of stuff, and can't right. just go all out on building military factories. Right. And then we also have traded goods. We are already trading. If you hover over it, it says we are currently trading one civilian factory to Sweden for eight tons, which I think is like a historical trade that is already in there. But yeah. well, we're going to throw that out pretty soon. Yeah, but something anyway, tells me that Sweden and Germany were on the best of terms during World War II. <laughs> well, they, 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 did, they did trade, and I mean, it wasn't yeah. a very... Okay, it's 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 accurate. But basically, we need gotta figure out what we're gonna build. So we yeah. have a whole bunch of stuff we can build: mm -hmm. infrastructure, air bases, and air that kind of stuff. But right, like in the early on, it's the best thing to build for us anyway is civilian factories, because building civilian factories means we have more civilian factories to build more civilian factories with, right? Which means we can build more. Um. So very basic, you just click on civilian factories mm -hmm. and then you get a map mode change yep. that shows you how many build slots are open in each state and the infrastructure the state has. And so basically the more infrastructure a state has, just build something here and hover over this yep. thing. If you hover over the little bar at the bottom, it should say next complete. Okay, so infrastructure like under the that fifteen out. fifteen, there's a smaller bar that'll show the progress. Yep. And down there, there is state infrastructure one point eight. So our production is going to be multiplied by one point eight in this state, and if we build in a lower infrastructure state, it'll be slower. Right. So basically, um, early on, we want to build in our best infrastructure states. Yep. Uh. So these. So like, Brandenburg, it's got nine out of twelve. Um, yeah. So that those three slots left. Like, let's say I built. Like, is it just specifically for each type of factory or factories in general? So, like, it's in general. Okay. Go so, back to like, um, the, if you close the construction window, uh -huh. click on the state. Ah, uh, okay. I see. I you see. get a display of the unlocked slots. What's in there? So right now we have five military factories and four civilian factories in Plum Book. Mm -hmm. and we have a whole bunch of locked slots. And the thing with the locked slots is as we advance down our industry tech, mm -hmm. we get more slots. Okay. So, so we can build more later. Wow. Yep. That's pretty cool. But right now, basically, all we just want to do is, like, I would have, like, slap down. And if you, like, if you hold shift while you're building, you place the maximum amount of buildings. Or, like, there's a couple... Uh, shortcuts for doing different things when building okay that you show up when you hover over in the build mode but basically what i would figure to have you do is like build civilian factories to cap in Wattenburg, Württemberg, Württemberg, and uh, Rheinland so three of our let's see 80 percent infrastructure states all right so 80 80 80 80 Let's see. Uh, East Prussia wasn't okay. Rhineland. Uh, should I do it in Rhineland? Yeah, I mean it's it's uh, demilitarized, but yeah. I mean doesn't mean we can't build civilian factories there. True. But, but 
and let's see now it turns blue which means we have no more slots and yeah sure best on why not yeah we slap that stuff in there and we're just that'll leave us set for our construction for a bit yep okay eventually it'll pop back up and tell us we have stuff free but not right now mm -hmm. next we have the military factories yeah there we already have like some setup going on so the game already starts us with a whole bunch of stuff to build hey is the car 98k and we're going to let's see so big question is okay what do you want to build how much mm -hmm. that kind of shit um right now in the early game is germany i feel like okay you want to pump out a bunch of you do want to bump out a bunch of infantry Mm -hmm. So building a like having ten factories on it for infantry equipment right now is okay. Support equipment. How are we gonna do that? Not sure. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna well first of all we're gonna go down a bit until mm -hmm. we find slots eight and nine, uh, seven and eight. Closer yep. support and tactical bombers. Right. And I want you to hit the trash can and throw those out. <laughs> I guess they're not very because, great early game. Um, basically, it's like the air in the most very basic sense in the Hearts of Iron 4 is if you can't get air superiority, you might as well not bother. Right. So, like, you want to put your big focus on fighters. And if you have superiority with your fighters, then you can go move to other areas. Right. Okay. But so basically, sense. I'm just going to go and say we're going to put five factories on fighters. All right. And make sure we have like a steady supply of those being pumped out. That means we still have like we have six more to spread out. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to do something like put one more in artillery because we might want yeah you know, we want those on all of our units as at least as support. And we're gonna put two more on tanks and three more on motorized. Right. Basically, like we, I have three basic unit types that I want to build, mm -hmm. which are infantry divisions, motorized divisions, and tank divisions. Right. And so, infantry uses infantry equipment, motorized uses infantry and motorized equipment. Right. And tanks use infantry, motorized, and tank equipment. Uh -huh. Wow. So in the beginning, while you're still pumping out your uh, motorized units as much, you want um, more motorized production because it's also going to go into your tank divisions. Mm -hmm. But we'll readjust that as we build more military factories, as we get more from focuses and whatnot. Yep. Makes okay, sense. let's go with divisions, uh, decisions next. The yes. little hammer, because uh, right. we're not going to do a lot here. Fair Basically, enough. we have one thing we need to pay attention to is the well, we don't really need to pay attention to is the maple bills. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it's it's some a very basic idea is the Nazis did some economic trickery to be able to rearm. And these bills will basically be automatically renewed every six months mm -hmm. and will cost us more political power, which is something we'll get into later. Right. But basically, it's just like, we're just going to leave that sit. We're not going to cancel the bills manually. And so mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the little uh, circle next to Mayfo bills at the top, right? which will toggle the notification. We do not need to be notified that we can cancel those. Mm-hmm. We know, we'll, and we're we'll not going to do it. We'll do it in our own time. Yeah. Same thing with uh, Gateway to Europe. Also going to yeah. disable that. That's basically like an influence mini game where you push political power into it, and it's kind of like fighting over Amsterdam and the Dutch. The but yeah. It's like you're going to just run over them later anyway, so who cares? I mean, you never Other know. They might, they might do the Benelux Federation thing. Yeah, then we're going to run over them. And <laughs> them. We got to get past them. Yeah. But the other ones we're just going to leave for now. Just eventually, if we get more political power as we play, we might go over those. But mm -hmm. for now, there's not a lot to do. 
then we have let's go with the national focus that's probably the most important thing Wait, Next. this is huge yeah there's a, in the top left uh, top right there's a little minus and a plus you can mm -hmm. zoom out and zoom in on the focus tree that's something they added recently and yeah, you can I'm, see there's a whole lot of stuff going on yep i'm using my mouse but, wheel to to go zoom in and out but yeah go on but yeah, basically, that's... so for one thing, we can already ignore basically half of like the big one on the right, where uh -huh. there's like the little uh, triangle with the red exclamation point. Yep. The branches are mutually exclusive. This is the big like shift mm -hmm. where you can either go with the standard or you can go alt history and start a civil war and that kind of stuff. We don't want to do yep. that, even though it's fun it's not the standard so we're just going to go with a regular well relatively regular thing right but the way focus trees work a lot of times is basically you have parts mm -hmm. you have the political part you have the army part you have the navy part you have the industry part that kind of thing mm -hmm. you have certain areas where if you focus if you use the focuses there you'll get points uh, you get stuff for that mm -hmm. And what I like to do early here with Germany is all the way on the left is the industry one. Oh, okay. So you can see here we have the focus four year plan, which gives Ooh, us research wow. bonuses to industry and gives us the ability to unlock a political advisor, which gives us faster civilian factory construction speed, which is also something we want. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, you could go with the Rhineland focus and de uh, remilitarize the Rhineland and go that way it gives you a big uh, political power boost early and lets you unlock like the the Anschluss that kind of thing but I would say we're gonna go with the four-year plan first so yeah. select that one Let, let's build up a bit before we piss off everyone well, that means we have our focus that means for the next 70 days we're good yep we ain't got to do anything on that front then we have let's let's do go back to the military construction with the outdated equipment in production notification. Uh, yep, got that. <laughs> this one basically tells us that the ships we're producing, we technically have better versions available, mm -hmm. but they're already a long time in progress, and we're not like we don't want to replace them with new versions because then we have to start all over. Yep. Okay. But. One thing we do want to do is what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go and assign 10 dockyards, the maximum amount of dockyards, to all of these ships. Right. Basically, uh, the thing is that so dockyards are military factories, except they only build boats. Mm -hmm. It's just another building. And what setting all of these to the maximum basically does for us is when one is finished, it'll be automatically assigned to the next one and we'll just go down the line and it won't keep nagging us, telling us, hey, you have unused dockyards. Right. And then one thing we're going to do all the way at the end is I'm going to go click on build ships or I'll let you click on build ships, the plus with the anchor. Uh -huh. Yep. And add a production line for convoys. Got it. Uh, should I max this one out as well? Uh, set it to five. Five. Okay, cool. Convoys are basically like what you need for overseas trade, overseas mm -hmm. lend lease, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. It's it's always useful to have convoys around. And I right. always like to have like one line just like pumping out convoys. And a, a lot of games when I play where I'm like, okay, I'm playing like India or something. And it's like India's not going to build a fucking navy. Like, mm -hmm. You basically have to start from scratch. So I'm just going to have all my dockyards doing convoys all the goddamn time <laughs> because eventually i'm gonna need him i'm gonna get like a big lend lease offer from like the uk or something and they're gonna be like hey we need five thousand convoys to ship us over yep and i'm gonna be like good i built them for five years i can do that actually <laughs> uh should i move these up into priority queue or are they fine at a bot? no i'll basically when the ships are done mm -hmm. i want them to start producing convoys and then we'll add like subs or something on right. the rest but that's for later so okay, these ones let's... with the darker brown background, they're the ones that have upgrades already that we could switch to, but we're not going to. Exactly. And uh... what we're going to do instead is we're just going to right click that notification. Cool. Okay, so you right clicked it and yep. it's gone on your end? Mm-hmm. 
okay, so then that's a per well, yeah, it makes sense that that's a per user thing, so I have to dismiss, dismiss it too. Yep. So now it'll only pop up if something changes in that situation. So if we research new guns and now our gun line is out of, um, date. Yeah. Out of date, then it'll pop up again. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one, we're going to go with insufficient resources. This is the, the one with the oil drop mm -hmm. and the steel bar. Yep. And that'll open up our rubber. trade. Yep. So basically, you need resources to build shit, uh, build weapons. Mm -hmm. In the construction menu, on or not the construction, the production menu, the all the lines have like little icons next to them telling you exactly what this line is currently producing mm -hmm. and it'll be red when it says okay like if you go into the production and you look at our motorized and our fighters yep they have rubber, rubber and if you hover over the bar that says how many per day or per week are produced you can see that the production efficiency is currently being lowered by lack of resources mm -hmm. so we have less we don't have the rubber we need to build so we're building our units slower Right. So to solve that, we got trade. So we jump back into the trade menu, mm -hmm. and we see, okay, we currently have, for instance, uh, 86 aluminum left over. Yep. We're extracting a certain amount, we're exporting a certain amount, and we need a certain amount, and we have a surplus. So that's mm -hmm. basically all. We're, we're good on that front. It's great. Yep. But rubber is not good because, well, there's no rubber in Europe. Not traditionally grown in Central Europe, no. So instead, we got a trade. Yep. So what we do is we click on the Dutch East Indies, for instance. Mm -hmm. and we get a menu of pop-up to tell us, okay, they can export this much. Here mm -hmm. you can see that we need convoys for this. Yep. And the game automatically selects the amount of factories that it would like. It would tell us to trade for if we just want to fix our current problem. Right. So you just click on send, and there we go. Now we currently have a trade going with the Dutch East Indies for 16 rubber for two civilian factories. Yep. Basically, it's it's eight resources for one civilian factory. And you can see all. Full, you can see the blue line that goes all the way to the Dutch East Indies. Yeah. It's pretty cool. That'll be the convoy line going all the way through the Suez Canal, going yep. Europe all the way over there. Is it just me, or does it feel like a bad idea to have to depend on rubber from someone that we're going to attack eventually? I mean, right now we don't care. Okay, true, true, true. We can we can solve that problem later. Yeah. Basically, it's like the um. There's going to be an alternative option for us. Mm -hmm. Basically, if you go back to the construction, you can see uh, there's a building with an oil drop under the civilian factory called synthetic refineries. Ah. Uh, Right. Yep. These produce fuel and rubber, and as we improve our technology, it'll produce more rubber. Okay. So right That's now good. we're basically just going to buy it because we don't have the we don't want to spend time building mm -hmm. this when we're not having our industry build up yet. But in the late run, our rubber will be coming from synthetic refineries or shit we conquer. Right. Makes sense. But but so now that we have the rubber dealt with, it's not. Is it green on your screen or is it? I don't remember um, if you have to. I think we need wait. a pause for it to take effect. Yeah, because for it's still... to update. So yeah. we have that solved anyway. Mm -hmm. And but now we also see tungsten. Tungsten is yellow. And yes. Yellow means we are trading for it, but we don't need it. Ah, uh, okay. So we can cancel so it. So we go into there. We can see we have Sweden, mm -hmm. but we're trading with Sweden, but we don't we don't need it. Right. Right now we're not producing anything that needs tungsten that much. Mm -hmm. So you just click on Sweden. And then yep. you drag the slider all the way over to the left to zero. Mm -hmm. And send. And then you say, and then you say send. See that? And then, Sawed off Sweden. Don't need you. So basically we've done that. Now we have an extra civilian factory to use to build that we wouldn't have had if we just let that trade sit. Right. And the trade would not have gotten us anything. That makes sense. Okay, so the insufficient resources will be gone once we unpause, so we don't mm -hmm. have to deal with that anymore. Which means yep. you only have two things left. Unassigned divisions and no divisions of basic training. Yep. We'll start with unassigned divisions. So with this one, you shift click it to shift. select all the divisions it thinks uh, they, okay. are, that are unassigned. 
So we have a whole bunch of stuff that we yep. need to assign to armies. Yep. So in this menu, what I like to do is if you double click a division type. So if you select, for instance, double click on the first inf the infantry division at the top, mm -hmm. we'll end up with only the infantry division selected. Oh, uh, they did not do that for me. Uh, if I double click, it opens up your stats. Uh, not on the icon itself, the name. Ah, okay. Okay, got it. And so now you should have like 24 infantry divisions selected. Yes, I do. And then you can click on the little... There's like two plus icons at the bottom for an yep. army group and an army. So basically we have armies and we have army groups. Very mm -hmm. basic is just you have an army group. It can hold 24 divisions. Mm -hmm. And you have your armies in army groups, which can hold five armies okay. by default. So create a new army with those 24 divisions. Bam. Hey. Now we have an army. So now Hooray. if you select the army, it's selected as an army, but it says we have no commander. You yep. should probably solve that. Mm -hmm. So there's the very handy click to assign thing here. Yep. You click on it, and it opens up your list of uh, generals. Mm hmm. So there's a whole bunch of generals in here. There are. As Germany, we have a whole bunch to select from. Quite a few but... famous names as well. Rommel. And I basically. Don't know anyone who's not Rommel. <laughs> Basically, they have uh, traits and mm -hmm. they have stats. Basically, like Crusader Kings 2 commanders or whatever. Right. Um, and you can see there are four stats. We have attack, mm -hmm. defense, skill, or like, what, what was the maneuver. third one again? Maneuver. Was... Probably that's what I would call it, because that's what you Maneuver or something like that, and yeah. supply. Right. And... But so we want to select one for our infantry. Now mm -hmm. somebody might say it's just put Rommel in there or something. Yep. But he's a panzer leader. Right. He's an armor officer. So yeah. that wouldn't be the best use of his skills. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the search thing. Mm -hmm. And we're going to type infantry. And when we do that, we automatically have a filter for the generals that have infantry officer traits. Oh, okay. And that means they will be more they will more quickly get the infantry leader trait and yep. we can then upgrade them to get the infantry expert trait which will make infantry divisions better. Oh, okay. So So I... basically you want to assign your division uh, your generals mainly according to traits or like depending on how your situation is. But for us, it's easiest to just go, okay, we want the guys with the right traits in the right armies. Okay. So I'm going to So you can Erwin, just select like Erwin yes, von just Bitzelberg. Von Bitzleben, yeah. So okay, now we have this guy. Yep. Okay, but he's just an army. We need him to have an army group as well because we're going to have a lot of infantry armies and we want that coordinated. Right. So that click on sense. the new army group button. Cool. And just like with the armies themselves, army groups need commanders as well. Right. Ooh. So now if you still have the filter in there, you probably have, you have to click in the search thing to, fill, uh, to clear it. Yep. Because we... So the thing is we have two levels of gen, uh, generals. We have generals and we have field marshals. Mm -hmm. You can see with the generals, they have a promote button with which you can promote them to field generals. Field generals are the only ones that can command army, army groups. groups. And so here, basically, we have three to choose from. So it's we can just go through and like, okay, if we look at von Kluge, we can see he has the army, armor officer trait. So he's going to mm -hmm. be the one that we want on our uh, separate army for our tanks and our motorized. Right. And so that leaves basically two... We have one with defense. Well, both have defensive doctrine. Mm -hmm. And so basically, it's like you could probably go by stats. So yeah. infantry is going to be the type that holds the line as opposed to the one that really does the big push. Mm -hmm. Like in theory, um, how it actually plays out is usually a bit different when I'm playing. But, you know, so in theory, the infantry field marshal should be the one that has the best defense. Uh -huh. Model. So Model, Model has four, and von Rundstedt has only has two. Mm -hmm. So we want Model on this one. Let's go Model then. Uh, does it automatically assign the uh, army to the army group? 
Uh, yeah, because you had the army selected when you click the new army group button. Ah, that makes sense. Yes. So basically, now we go back and we shift click again on our unassigned divisions, and we see we only have six left. Right. So now I'm just going to go ahead and do like a quick run through. So I'm going to select our three uh, armor divisions, make that mm -hmm. a group, mm -hmm. and assign Rommel to it. Then I'm going to take the one motorized we have, mm -hmm. click on that one, and assign von Manstein to it. Now okay. I can, now with shift clicking, I can select both of these army groups, mm -hmm. or like both of these armies, and then click the new army group button. Right. And I have a new army group that automatically has both of them assigned. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, if you have an army that's just kind of hanging around, like if I just make a new one, it's just hanging around, I can just right click it when, uh, I can right click the army group when it's selected, and it'll just ah. hang it on there. Okay, that makes and sense. And if I want to take it out again, I can just drag it away. Ah, okay. That uh, makes sense. So basically, we have we have two divisions left sitting here: one cavalry division and one mountaineer division. Mm -hmm. And so I'm gonna assign that to the infantry group. But basically, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna say, okay, so cavalry. I mean, you can you can use it, I guess, but I just never yeah. figured out how to like efficiently use it unless I'm doing like a fucking meme game in <laughs> Kaiserreich where I'm fucking playing as Mongolia and going ham with cavalry or something. Yeah. But what we're going to do is we're going to select the cavalry commando instant book. Mm -hmm. And then there's a button next to the disband, the trash can that says change division template. Right. If you click on that, you get a mm -hmm. bunch of options. Basically, templates are our unit types. We can customize mm -hmm. these later. Right now, we have these five to select from. Okay. And basically, what I want you to do is to change them into a Mountaineer. So that is the right. fourth one. So we can have just a, um, a specific Mountaineer uh, army rather than a weird mishmash yeah. of miscellaneous. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, and so we're going to use that when we're going to have that around for special situations. We're going to expand that later. Now I'm just going to go ahead and reset the name for it. That's not something we need to worry about. Mm -hmm. And I don't know who the fuck am I going to assign to it. I'm going to assign... Should I, I don't put know, this guy? Yeah, should I put Von, I just, Klug, Von Klug in the other army group? Might as yeah. well. Okay, so now we have all our army set up. Yep. We have all that ready. What I'm going to do now is just going to give... If you select, let's say, select army group one... Mm -hmm. You can see there's a menu above them with battle plans. Ah, uh, okay, yep. This is basically like the thing with Hearts Iron Four is it it brought in the uh, these battle plans, which basically you draw the battle plans and then the units do the mm -hmm. plans for you. Yep. You don't have to like manually do all the stuff, which is, I mean, the it's kind of dumb the AI, but you know mm -hmm. it's it's very handy just to have. Yeah, it's better than and, manually doing all. Yeah, and basically, like, you can use it, and you can micromanage specific units if you want later. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to use it. But the thing what we need right now is the point of fallback line, which is a uh, little shield with a dotted line. Yes. Okay, got it. So you click that, and it says right-click and drag the mouse on friendly territory to draw a defensive order. And basically, just draw like it won one or two provinces okay so any, like, any provinces will do just draw it let's go against the river oh I wanted to be on the upper side of the river I mean it doesn't really matter because basically what I'm doing right now is just wanting all units to congregate in a single place and I can't just tell them to go there because some are over here in East Prussia mm -hmm. and they're not gonna go unless they're right on a naval thing or something right uh, let me Let's make it a longer one. Airfoot. Yeah, I'm not going to yeah, be able to pronounce any of these names. I mean, if we ever yes. get to Asia, then sure, I can pronounce it there, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm just going <laughs> to go ahead, so whoop, I'm going to draw another line for this little yep. group, and now they're going to go over here, and we're, we'll know where all our divisions are. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and that means we have one more thing left, and that is divisions and basic training. Yes. Here we have our recruit and deploy. Mm-hmm. Here is where we basically say, okay, who do we want to train? Yep. And, I mean, there's not a lot to say about this one, except, like, what do we want to do, maybe? But like, So if you hover over the division's names, you get, like, a display of what, how much equipment they're using of each type. Mm-hmm. Which can be handy if you need to know, okay, like, how much do I need to plan here? But basically, I'm just going to go say, I'm going to, we're going to train infantry division. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to, I'm going to shift click on the add unit button to add five more. So we're going to train six infantry okay. divisions in parallel. And there's here the, the, the little infinity thing mm-hmm. where it says how many times we're going to do that. We're just going to say four times. Right. And then under no location set, I'm just going to pick a random province mm-hmm. to drop them. That's important when we're when you're at war, but when we're at peace, it doesn't matter where we want them. We just drop them there. Right. And so basically, I'm just going to... You can click to collapse the thing where you... So you don't have all of it shown at right. once when you're training a bunch of different ones because I'm not going to do this, this, and this. And I'm going to say we want one armor division production hang on a second yeah we can do it with priorities okay we want one armored division in production we want two motorized division in production we're gonna Mm -hmm. have those on infinite for now just have them pump out in small amounts yep and then with the mountaineers you're gonna see there's a one next to the add unit button you can also see like a little wing icon on Mm -hmm. the right that means this is a special this is a special forces unit Mm-hmm. You can only have so many special forces in like a percentage or like there's a ratio and you can upgrade it by um, tr- researching like the specific um, stuff. Right. Like in the, if we go back to research for a second, there's at the bottom is a branch for special forces, which gives you, um, let's see, where is it? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, there, well, there is one for special forces, but it actually doesn't give you a better cap. I guess this, I think I got that from the Fallout mod. <laughs> it has technologies that give you spe- specifically more cap for it. Okay. But basically, like, if we have more army, we can do we can do more Mountaineers. But so for now, we're just going to add two Makes to sense. our current maximum and just plop them down. So those will be training as well. Mm-hmm. I guess okay. we're going to want to use well, them if we ever want to try and break through the Magina line legit, rather than going through. Yeah, I mean, well... Eh. So we're, I mean, we're not going to touch the Magina line. We can Let's, try. Uh, no, it means a lot of dead. <laughs> okay. like one basic thing to learn about Hearts of Iron 4, if you're in, like, a shit situation, just try to def- defend as hard as possible. Okay. I mean, this won't fly in multiplayer because people are smart, but the yeah. AI will sometimes just attack you and bleed themselves dry. Nice. And it can be very rough to try and break through like a solid defensive line. So mm-hmm. when you have the best defensive line in the world, that's like if you go over to uh, SS Lothringen and click on like one of the provinces there. Uh, where is this? Sorry. Like, click on uh, the bo- the border to France. Right. You click on like Strasbourg. Right. You will see at the bottom left corner there is a ten out of ten land fort. Oof. And if you okay. hover over it, it says this building inflicts an attack penalty of minus fifteen percent for each fort level. <laughs> okay, that's a lot. That is a lot. Yes. So basically, attacking there is death. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's not go through the Magino line. Yeah, but so basically, if we want, if we get like Italy into our uh, faction, mm-hmm. and we want to help them out busting through like the French border down here, yeah, that's, okay, that's mountains. That's so, also bad. Or if like shit goes weird and uh, Italy decides, okay, I'm not gonna team up with Germany. I'm going to team up with Hungary and Austria. Uh... And we try to, and we tr- or I don't know, can can they even do that? El Clasico, sure they can... as I call it. Uh, I'm not sure if they can do that in this, mm-hmm. like in vanilla. It might just be in like a specific mod I played, but wasn't it? It's, it's in... a scenario. So if that happens, then we'll have to invade Austria. 
when we do the Anschluss. And that's a lot of mountains too, so that we want to uh, not have okay. mountaineers there. So it can be very useful to have like a good mountaineer division going on. Actually, wasn't but Italy so, in the Entente in World War One or something like that? So they actually, yeah, yeah, and then they, they switch they, sides, and it's uh, there's there's stuff there's stuff going on with Italy, but like in, <laughs> in this game, Italy's focus tree is very limited, mm -hmm. so they can not do a whole bunch. Like I'm looking at it right now, they can yeah, like they go that, they can go not... a different route where they like go with uh, nationalist Spain. Mm -hmm. instead of going with the axis or they can do this italy first thing but italy first doesn't like um put them on a, like a direct path against us mm -hmm. by uh cock blocking us from the anschluss but instead it's just sort of them doing their own thing right and still attacking the same people that we would be attacking but so basically we'll see how all that goes with mm -hmm. when time actually starts moving and the uh, whole focus is start going yep but so yeah so we have basically set up everything we have and we would be ready to do Press a pause. to unpause now instead i'm going to save the game so lp co up save one save do i need to save on my end or just the host then I have no idea. Do it, do it just in case. Okay, let's see if I have the option. Or if you even if you even can. Uh, I do have the, the option. Can. I do have the option actually. Uh, let's call okay. it LP uh, game zero one zero one. In case we decide to do a second game. Yeah. All right. Okay. And that should be it for now. So yep. basically, that's we got everything set up. Mm -hmm. Next time. We're gonna start on pausing and like do stuff, and that'll be the point at which we will not have a nice episode endings and that kind <laughs> of thing because we're probably just gonna play like three hour session, and then yep. I'll churn that out into different episodes and stuff like that. But yep. that'll be for them. First, I gotta get this thing up on the sandcastle, and hopefully, no horrifying crippling technical flaws reveal themselves. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yep. that'll be it for this time. So see you next All time. Right. See you next time, guys.